I had a graphic made uh, by the Great Newsmax team for my Sunday show, the Gorka Reality Check. Uh, this is uh, S14. This is the, 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 I call this the political persecution of a president graphic. I just did this on the back of an envelope in preparation for my, my show on Sunday. Look at this short. This is a short list of what we have witnessed in the last seven years. Operation Crossfire Hurricane, the first ever tri-service intelligence operation against the presidential campaign, which of course took down my friend Mike Flynn. Then we have the Mueller probe, 20 months, FBI, $40 million, Russia collusion, disproven, didn't happen, no evidence. Impeachment one, impeachment two, the January 6th committee, the Mar-a-Lago raid, and now the Manhattan indictment and arraignment. This is what you call in a court of law a fact pattern. What happened today isn't the outlier. What happened today is just one more iteration in the continued political persecution of one man. Why this man? Very simply, because America should not have elected him president. That's the sin so they committed. Let me ask you this, Sebastian. Where does it stop? Where does it end well, that? Where does it stop? Uh, as a, as a, as a, as a former deputy to the president and a vowed conservative, it stops when we put him back into the White House and he mm -hmm. drains the swamp. Let's, let's talk to somebody who understands what it means to go up against the establishment. He's been doing it for more than a quarter of a century. The man who made populism sexy again, Mr. Brexit, Nigel Farage. Welcome to Newsmax, Nigel. Thank you and good evening. And let me just tell you, guys, we're watching this from our side of the pond and even the globalist BBC are saying that this prosecution is overtly political. Just think wow. what this is doing for America's standing in the world. America, the leader of the free world. I think today's a very, very sad day, but I have to say myself, I don't think it was really President Trump in that courtroom today. It was Western civilization as we know it. I believe the stakes are that high. Let me ask you, as a seasoned politician who did so much to make the UK sovereign again with 17 and a half million people, more than any other vote in history, gaining their freedom against uh, the EU, what is your advice to your friend, to President Trump moving forward? How much of the next 20 months does he build around the vicious attacks on him? And how much is it about what is happening to the average American? What is your political and communications advice, Nigel? I thought tonight was a good start. I thought what we saw tonight was a disciplined speech. It was one of controlled anger. Um, and he, he must never, ever uh, give the other side the impression that they're getting to him. Um, he was strong. He was defiant. Look, the key to all of this politically, in terms of messaging, is what happens to those people in the middle, those people who could vote Republican or Democrat next time round. He's got to appeal to the fair-mindedness of decent human beings who can see what is going on here is not due process. It is not within the spirit of the American Constitution. It says that the judiciary has gone rotten in America. It is aiming firmly at that centre ground that is the absolute key to it. And I thought tonight he made a pretty good start on that. Nigel, you, you made such a great point. You talk about uh, the, the BBC's perception of what's happening here, the view from across the pond. You know, we just learned this week uh, about that Chinese spy balloon that was flying across the country, that it, in fact, gathered uh, intelligence uh, regarding our military sites. How do you think this is being perceived, what's happening, both the, uh, this nation in decline that President Trump speaks of, as well as what is happening to the former president? How is that being perceived on a, on a global scale? Well, I think that the China balloon incident, of course, should be one of the biggest stories ever. You know, an American president sat and watched for over five days as a Chinese spy balloon did figures of eight across important American installations while sending lifetime pictures back to Beijing. I mean, look, we all look up to America. Of course we do. You've been the leaders of the free world for the last century. And the real fear I have, and a growing number of people have, is that if America falls, we all fall. You know, I mean, Beijing, Beijing today must be watching what happened on Manhattan. They must be literally laughing their socks off as the most powerful country in the world turns in on itself, because that is what's going on. And actually, through history, you see the great empires generally fall not through outside threats, 
but through what happens within their own borders. So this is so, so important. I think the Democrats have completely overplayed their hand. Uh, the Trump team don't need to make any mistakes. They've just got to keep appealing to fairness, to decency, to American values and to Western values. Uh, I think there's every chance he's going to come through this much, much stronger as a human being, as a defender of liberty, democracy and decency.